I'm so excited for the Olympics. It's every four years. It's the greatest sporting event of you know all time to me, and it's the best time you can have all the sports all together and you know everybody cheering for everybody. It goes by so fast. Your events. You're the indoor hurdling champion at 60 meters. You're the outdoor hurdling champion. Yet you know make or break. What is it? 12 seconds and all that training. I mean, what type of uh, psychological impact does that have on you as you train and you think about how quick the moment actually is? Um, well, I think of it as kind of two things. Like the moment goes by in 12 seconds, but I think back to like outdoor championships and I can remember the race in slow motion and the residuals from it, you know, 12 seconds of, you know, eh, glory has become months and months and months of fun. So I think, you know, train hard, have fun now. How did your career in track and field begin? Well, so I have a sister. She is six years older than me, and she ran track. And so my mother and father also ran track. So I was about four or five, and she was out at the track with her friends, and they have track practice. And of course, I'm like the dorky little sister. I'm running behind her, trying to do all the drills and running stuff. I'm trying to do long jump, and it kind of just stuck. And then, you know, as growing up, I was, was better than everybody else. Like I had just more athletic ability than everybody else. I was racing the boys, beating them in the neighborhood, you know, talking junk to them, of course. And then as I got older, um, my mother was in an abusive situation at home. And then it became like a sexually abusive situation to me. So track and then dance also, but definitely track became my outlet. You know, it's why I didn't have to be at home. I didn't have to be in the terrible situation. So I definitely poured myself into track. And I knew if I wanted to go to college, you know, we didn't have money to pay for college. So I knew a track could take me there. Do you think overcoming that situation at home, that abusive situation, do you think that eventually made you a stronger person, a stronger competitor? Completely. I think I can deal with pressure and, you know, tense situations a lot better than, you know, my, the average person. You know, I've seen the depths of real life. So track is fun to me, you know, the pressure situations, a final, you know, going out and racing, that's easy, you know, compared to where I came from. Mm. Does it bother you at all that in the United States, track and field, professional track and field certainly is nowhere near as popular as it is in places like Europe, for example. And, and do you think that there's potential here to build up the professional side of track and field? I would love to be able to compete here. I mean, I'm from here, my family lives here. You know, to think I have to tell them to watch my races on the internet or, you know, to DVR it because mm. it comes on, you know, six hour time difference, eight hour time difference. What do you think the problem is as far as uh, being so far, at least at this point, building track and field up as a business here? We definitely have sponsor problems. You know, uh, we don't have the big sponsors that, you know, football, baseball, hockey may have. And I think if one company would just take that chance, they could see that it would definitely pay off. You have to spend so many hours training, though. How are you able to divide your time between training and, quite frankly, mm -hmm. getting the money you need to compete? That's the difficult part. Um, training is very, very expensive. You know, we're not mm -hmm. like a professional team where we don't have to pay our coach. Like, mm -hmm. I pay my coach. I pay my health care, my physio, chiropractor, acupuncture. I pay my way to some track meets. I have to pay hotels, rental cars. So things like that cost a lot of money that other professional sports don't have to go through. So I really work on you know, sponsors, trying to generate more revenue through sponsors. Um, I try to compete at the highest level so whenever I go to a track meet, I can make the most money possible. And it's a shame that when I get on the line, I'm counting dollars mm -hmm. instead of thinking about you know, performing or, you know, I hope that little girl at home is going to be happy to watch me run. Like, we shouldn't have to count dollars because we're professional athletes just like the next. If you could write your script for the future any way you wanted it to be and have it come out that way, what would that script be? I'd say a two-time gold medalist. Um, I'd be married with a family and working with my foundation and definitely helping people helping women get out of bad situations, children get out of abusive situations, and to just help empower people to know that they're in a, they could be in a better place. They don't have to be a product of their environment. And, you know, anything is possible to dream big and don't let anybody tell you that, you know, you have to be where you are.